So I want to talk about early Muslim views of the West. And first, let me talk a bit about what happened kind of pre, pre-colonization. So despite kind of what happened later, even though there was colonization ultimately, um, the Muslims, many Muslims at that time, of, of even before colonization, did view the West quite favorably. So for example, um, in Iran, there were a number of intellectuals. For example, uh, Mulkum Khan was one of them. Mulkum Khan, he was alive from 1833 until 1908. Um, and also, Aga Khan Kirmani. Aga Khan Kirmani, and he was alive from 1853 until. Uh, 1896, and these are both Iranian intellectuals, and they wanted Iranians to have Western education and to really supplant the Sharia with secular legal code. Um, in Egypt, there was a writer named uh, Rifa al Tatawi, Rifa al Tatawi, and he was alive from 1801 until 18. 73, and he was actually pro-West. He was quite impressed also by the French. Um, and then there was um, Sayyid Ahmed Khan, and he's from India, Sayyid Ahmed Khan from India, and he was alive from uh, 1817 until 1898. And interestingly enough, he actually uh, was the founder of a college uh, now called the Aligar, Aligar Muslim University. So he actually, and one interesting thing about this university, and this is kind of what made him found it and start it, is it's a university that, that taught things like science and English alongside traditional Islamic subjects. So it gave Muslims an opportunity to kind of learn um, not only their traditions, but also uh, more modern elements as well. All right, now these were kind of attempts at, at, at pre-colonization. Now you want to even talk about um, a couple of other events that, that were, um, that kind of went broader. So and this is maybe, you know, these, these were events of, of people who, who kind of looked at things favorably. I want to talk a bit about attempts at modernization in, in uh, kind of pre-colonial Muslim territories. Uh, so in 1826, uh, Sultan Mahmud, and that's actually drawn in here, let me actually change colors. Uh, Sultan Mahmud, okay, in 1826, he actually had passed regulations. He passed regulations to basically abolish what are called janissaries. And janissaries, if you look it up, it's uh, these are infantry units that formed the Ottoman Sultan's household troops and bodyguards. And uh, the janissaries were basically a force that were created by Sultan Murad I in the 14th century. Uh, and they were abolished by Sultan Mahmud as part of an effort to kind of modernize his society uh, and also modernize the army. He also introduced some new technologies. Um, in 1839, 1839, this happened in 1826, 1839, uh, I believe it was uh, Sultan Abdul Hamid, Sultan Abdul Hamid, um, and he basically uh, issued what was called the Gulhain Decree which made his rule subject to keeping contractual agreements with his subjects. So he actually kind of limited his own power, which is certainly a very modern uh, concept. Um, in 18, actually, so the next person I want to talk about is Muhammad Ali from Egypt. And this is, uh, uh, there he is right here. Muhammad Ali, and he's in Egypt. And he actually was alive from 1769 until 1849. And he actually actually is quite an interesting character in history. He was very brutal and he used a lot of very aggressive methods to kind of modernize Egypt. Uh, so even though we think of modernization normally as a positive word, it can actually have a lot of negative connotations in terms of how it's carried out 
and even in terms of what some of its effects are. And in his particular case, he did things like he would confiscate religious property, he established labor bans and improved irrigation, water communications, he modernized the army. I mean, people were quite in fear of him. Uh, he had a grandson. His grandson's name was um, Ismail Pasha. Ismail Pasha. And Ismail Pasha was basically, uh, he was born in 1803 until 1895. He actually carried out many efforts. In fact, he paid for things like the Suez Canal construction. Um, Ismail Pasha built 900 miles of railways, irrigated about 1.4, okay, 1.373 million acres of previously uncultivatable land. He set up modern schools for boys and so on and so forth. Actually, in the process, interestingly enough, he bankrupted Egypt and that actually weakened the country to the point where British were able to establish military occupation in 1882. Um, and so I think it's worth pointing out, 1882, um, the British, British occupied Egypt. So even though the intention was to kind of modernize Egypt through, through all these efforts, uh, the unintended consequence was that Egypt basically itself became occupied because it was so weakened. And I think the key is that these leaders and, and many ones after it, they really ran into a lot of trouble because their transformations, their attempt at modernizing their societies were ultimately quite superficial and they didn't account for the overall societal impact. And I'll talk a bit more about that in the next video.